hello everyone welcome to the 20th lecture of the course in the previous lecture we studied how the self observes the coexistence and its expression at different levels of awakening of the activities of the self and in this lecture we study the role of human being in this ever expressive coexistence so in this module we are studying about the nature and existence and this is the last lecture of module 4 and now we are going to explore the role of human being in this ever expressive coexistence so how to go about it so if you look at the important conclusion that we have been able to draw through our investigation till now through these modules one thing is that human being is coexistence of self and body and now i think this is clear to you that human being is coexistence of one conscious entity and the material entity and the self the conscious entity is central to human existence body merely being an instrument a physiochemical entity we are also able to see that the need of the self is continuous happiness and it is fulfilled by right understanding right feeling and thought in the self and the body is working as an instrument i hope there are no more doubts regarding this we are we all are able to see this very clearly next if you look at module 4 we have been trying to see how the whole existence is coexistence and how the units are submerged in space so being in space every unit is energized self organized and recognizing its relationship with other units and fulfilling it by space being at the base so we studied about the self in detail in module 3 and we studied about coexistence in detail in module 4 and now i think we are able to see that coexistence is central to this existence as we studied in module 3 that self is central to human existence now we can see that coexistence is central to existence and all the units in the nature all the orders of the nature are expression of this coexistence their innateness their natural characteristic is an expression of this coexistence now all that we see in the nature as four orders are expression of coexistence something that we are able to conclude and existence can be understood by awakening to the activities of the self both lower and higher activities put together so ultimately it is me the self who has to see the coexistence who has to realize the coexistence realize the submergence and that is going to happen by awakening of the activities of the self so one simple conclusion is that i am the seer right and i have to see the reality as it is in its completeness and the more i am able to awaken to the higher activities i am able to see it more clearly and when i am able to have the realization of existence in this existence then i am able to see the whole existence as it is in totality in completeness now on the basis of these conclusions now we can define the role of human being in this existence and this is what we intend to explore in this session so i hope you are able to appreciate this i hope this much is clear to you unless we are able to understand the human being unless we are able to understand the existence it is not possible for us to understand the role of human being in this existence for example if somebody assumes oneself to be the body and this whole existence as material then you can just see what kind of role will one assume for oneself isn't it so that's why this is something fundamental unless we are able to understand the human being and existence the role cannot be clear so with this at the base now we are going to study the role of human being in this existence so what would be the role okay so the role is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence this is all to put it in brief this is all that we have to do i have to realize this coexistence i have to understand the coexistence i have to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and i have to live accordingly isn't it my behavior work and participation has to be in accordance with this so to put it in very brief this is all that we need to do okay but for this we need to do the whole thing of exploration and that's what we are working for we are trying to understand the coexistence and we'll see that the more we are able to understand the coexistence our living gets in accordance with it so fulfillment of this role leads to continuous happiness in the self which is the basic human desire now to make it more expressive we can say that coexistence harmony relationship 
is all that has to be understood. So essentially the harmony is an expression of coexistence. The relationship is also an expression of coexistence. So as we are studying the activities of the self, when we're studying how the self observes the coexistence. So we can see that we are able to contemplate on the relationship. We are able to understand the harmony and we are able to realize the coexistence. And this is awakening to the higher activities of the self. And once we are able to do this, you only have to live accordingly. So this is all that a human being needs to do, isn't it? Now to understand the coexistence, would require basically two things. One is to have the clarity, right? To have the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization activated in the self. And that ensures knowledge. Isn't it right understanding? And based on that, we are having the feeling and thought of coexistence. We are able to have the clarity of how to live in coexistence and that's the resolution. So we have discussed about resolution. We discussed the nine steps in the resolution. And if you look at all those nine steps, essentially we are talking about having the clarity of coexistence, isn't it? So, so with the contemplation of relationship, understanding of harmony and realization of coexistence, we are able to have the feeling and thought of coexistence. And then our whole imagination in block B2 is guided accordingly and we are able to feel resolved. So this is one thing. So. And the second thing is to live in coexistence, that is relationship with human beings. Now, when I go to live with human beings with a feeling of relationship, then my development gradually is from ensuring my competence to live in harmony in the family. And that goes up to world family. I'm able to see the whole world as a family. And I'm able to make my program accordingly. Presently, when we try to look at our family, most probably we are trying to look at family in terms of relationships based on body, based on physical facilities, based on preconditionings. But once we are able to see the relationship as it is, we are able to see our relationship with every human being. And then the whole world appears as a family. We are able to see our complementariness with every human being of the world. And then we are able to participate in undivided society. Isn't it? Now, the word is very simple, saying undivided society, but once you go to live accordingly, then you have to work a lot on your behavior, on your feeling, on your thought, so that we are able to ensure justice in every relationship, isn't it? So we are able to ensure justice. We are able to ensure justice from family to the world family, isn't it? Now, we are able not only to live in coexistence with human beings, we are also able to live in coexistence with the entire nature from family order to the world family order. And thus we participate in the universal human order. Now with the clarity of all these four orders of nature, we are able to see our relationship with the physical order, with the bio order, with the animal order, with the human order. And in the process of fulfilling the needs of the family, we are also able to participate with the whole world family. We are able to participate with every unit of nature in such a way that the whole nature is preserved, the whole nature is enriched. And at the same time, we also feel prosperous. So we are able to participate in the universal human order. So this is all that we need to do to understand coexistence and to live in coexistence. To understand coexistence, we have to ensure the realization, understanding and uh, contemplation of coexistence, harmony and relationship based on which we are able to have feeling and thought based on coexistence. And then when you go to live accordingly, then we interact with the human beings and we interact with the rest of nature. And we are able to ensure our fulfillment with human being as well as the rest of nature. And thus we are able to work for undivided society and universal human order. And that becomes the foundation of a human tradition going from one generation to another generation. I hope you are able to appreciate this. Now put in another way, we can say that knowledge leads to resolution and the resolution leads to my role in the undivided society and that leads to my role in the universal human order. So at the core is my knowledge, is my right understanding, is my awakening to the higher activities of the self and the more we are able to do this, we feel resolved in block B2 and then our natural participation is there 
with human being at the rest of nature and we naturally participate in terms of undivided society and universal human order. Hence, what we need to do is basically ensuring knowledge and resolution in the self and ensuring undivided society and universal human order by working through body in mutual relationship. So to participate with the other human being or the rest of nature, I do have the need for the body and then materialize my body in this process. So this is all that we have to do, isn't it? But we are talking about this with the right understanding of human being and existence at the background. And with that clarity only, we can be able to envisage our role in the entire nature, isn't it? So the role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence and to make it more expressive we can say that we need to understand coexistence harmony and relationship and we need to live accordingly so this is all okay that we need to do to understand the coexistence harmony and relationship and to live accordingly and gradually as you go to do this the unfolding starts when you try to unfold coexistence you have to understand the four orders in nature to understand the four orders in nature, you have to understand the human being. To understand the human being, we have to understand the self and the body. To understand the self and the body, I have to understand the self, which is coexisting with the body. And then I have to work on higher activities of the self. So wherever you start from, ultimately, we need to develop the higher activities of the self. And that is at the core. And the more we are able to do this, we are able to live accordingly. So on one end is our participation in the universal human order and on one end is the activation of the higher activities of the self, awakening to the higher activities of the self. Now, if you recall what we have been trying to do in exercise one, so essentially we have been working for this. Now, if you look at exercise one in step 6a, we are verifying that it is the feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship that is acceptable to us naturally and that only leads to the state of happiness. Now you have heard of this, but in exercise one, we are trying to see this directly through direct observation. That yes, this is something which is there in me, acceptable to me naturally. I only have to work to ensure that the feeling is there. Now in step 6b, we are trying to understand coexistence, harmony and relationship. So in step 6a, we are deciding that yes, this is doable. This is something that I need to do. And then step 6b, we are trying to do this actually, isn't it? And now in step 7, we are ensuring that the feeling and thought that we have every moment is in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship and not otherwise. So we are trying to ensure that block B2 is completely guided by block B1. And in that process, we are also able to awaken the higher activities of block B1. And then this leads to happiness in me every moment isn't it? So we have to start from the present moment and then we have to keep on working on it so that we are able to ensure it every moment. Now every moment means every moment, continuity, isn't it? And this is what is essentially required to be done. The proposal is very brief, very short, but the work, the task that is to be accomplished is huge because it is all that you have to work on yourself to ensure this kind of feeling and thought based on your understanding. So what we are trying to do through exercises one and two, essentially we are trying to identify the role of human being in this existence and fulfill it by ensuring understanding, feeling and thought of coexistence, harmony and relationship every moment. So exercise one and two allow you to directly observe your current state of competence, directly observe what is acceptable to you naturally and to ensure the thought and feeling on this basis. And we are already in this process, isn't it? Gradually, we are trying to observe the whole thing as it is based on our own observation. So I hope you are into this process. You are able to do this. And we have been discussing this in our exercises also. So the more we are able to accomplish this, whatever we discussed so far becomes more clear to us. We get a better insight into all this. Now. The fulfillment of the role of human being leads to continuous happiness and this is expressed in the form of bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness. And this is something that we are going to see. So we discussed about this, the word bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness. 
we'll have a look at it once again. So I hope you remember the diagram very well now. So on one end, we are trying to ensure the realization within. And on another end, if you look at the expression outside, we are able to participate in the universal human order and human tradition. Now, as we had discussed earlier, so the understanding of harmony with the realization of coexistence is to bliss. The definiteness of desire participation based on the understanding of harmony in the nature leads to satisfaction and now our desires become definite. Similarly, based on the definiteness of desire, we are able to have definiteness in thought and then coexistence, harmony and justice guide our senses, health and profit and this is the state of peace and this is the state of peace. And based on this, we are able to ensure goal and value guided sensation, which is the state of happiness. So this is a natural outcome. So if I look at my participation, if I'm able to participate rightly, a natural outcome is bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness. And all this put together is continuity of happiness. So with this fulfillment of the role of human being in existence, the process of unfolding of coexistence is also completed. And this is what essentially we need to do. And this is something that we are going to share in the next two slides. But if you look at the whole process, we have been trying to unfold the coexistence, isn't it? Now you are acquainted with this diagram. So essentially we are trying to accomplish this, that the activities become complete. So essentially we are trying to accomplish this, that the activity becomes complete all the 10 activities in the cell that we studied get activated and this is activity completeness and when with this i'm able to see my role in this existence and live accordingly the conduct completeness is ensured and this is all that is required to be done activity completeness and conduct completeness but for that i have to work for right understanding for that i have to live with right understanding right feeling and thought so that the actual development that is desirable takes place in me. And this is the development that we are working for. So now I hope you are able to connect the discussion on the self that we did, the discussion on the existence that we did. And now with that, we are able to understand our role in the existence and that can lead us to the state of conduct completeness. So when we talk about activity completeness, the block B1 has to get activated, based on which block B2 has to be guided properly. And with that, we are able to participate and live accordingly. And then our conduct completeness takes place when we are able to participate in the human tradition, okay, by enabling our participation in the universal human order. So this is the activity completeness when <clears throat> block B1 gets activated, based on which block B2 is guided, and then we are able to participate in undivided human society and universal human order. And with this, the with this and with this, the conduct completeness takes place. So activation of all the activities of the self is activity completeness and participation in undivided society, universal human order leading up to human tradition is conduct completeness. And then only we can say that we are able to develop as a human being, as a self. And now, as we discussed earlier, you can see that the only possibility of development in the entire existence is here in the self. If we miss it out, ultimately, we have not achieved anything through all our endeavors because ultimately we have missed out the core. So we might be working for a physical facility, name, fame, post, all those things. We might be accumulating a lot of facilities, indulging in so many ways, but ultimately if this is left out, our development remains due. I think you are able to see this clearly now. So how do we go about ensuring this role of human being? So, so as you mentioned earlier, our, Essentially, we are trying to understand the coexistence and live in coexistence, which is more expressive in terms of coexistence, harmony and relationship. And we have to understand it and live accordingly. Now, the question is, how do we go about ensuring this role? So one of the possible ways is what we have described through exercise one to three. In exercise one, we have been trying to observe the feeling in the self. In exercise two, we have been trying to observe the coexistence of self and body. And this is what is preparing our ground for exercise three when we try to observe the self submerged in this coexistence. So out of this, we are already working through exercises one and two. Now we are preparing the ground for exercise three. 
So let us see whether it results into fulfillment of the role of human being, leading to continuous happiness in the self, which is the basic human desire. So not so many things to say in this lecture. It's only that we have to focus on this, that our whole task is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence and put it in a detailed manner. We can say that it is the coexistence relationship and harmony that has to be understood and lived accordingly. Now there are some questions for your homework. So we are going to take up questions which we are discussing in exercise one. So in exercise one, in step six A, you have to observe which feelings are naturally acceptable to you, feelings of relationship or opposition, harmony or disharmony, coexistence or struggle. Further verify this for the feelings of trust or mistrust, respect or disrespect, affection or jealousy. So I hope you are able to see the steps clearly. Now, before going to step six A, of course, you have to accomplish steps one to five. With that only you are able to accomplish this. In step 6b, we are able to see that if the feelings of relationship, harmony and coexistence are the feelings which are acceptable to us naturally, then there's a need to understand this and live accordingly. So the major part of the content of UHP 3 is therefore related to this, that we need to work to ensure this kind of understanding and feeling in each one of us. And in step seven, you have to investigate whether the feeling that you have at this moment is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence or not. And you have to investigate that if these feelings are ensured in continuity, then we will be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment. That is, we will be in a state of continuity of happiness. So I hope you are able to appreciate these steps. And this is something that you have to do as an assignment in this lecture. So in today's lecture, we try to understand the role of human being in the coexistence with the activation of the higher level activities of the self. And we could see that the whole thing is basically to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence, isn't it? And to make it more expressive, we can say that to have the realization of coexistence, to understand the harmony and to be able to contemplate on the relationship and to live accordingly. This is all that is required to be done. This is the nutshell what we discussed today. Thank you.